Hello my soccer universe, uh, let's wrap up this Nations League campaign with uh, match day four which was definitely the craziest of them all and uh, I actually expected in some way, I should have mentioned in the last video, um, you know with uh, four matches in 10 or 11 days this was bound to be the one where all the rails came off. That is exactly what happened. Um, I've decided to finish the Nations League up now and I will do tomorrow the um, World Cup because I want to include a prediction. Uh, also, I have not really had the time to uh, look at the uh, actual highlights from these games as well. But as I say, boy, uh, especially when I look at League A, uh, this was the round of absolutely crazy and nuts result. Many uh, lopsided wins that one didn't expect. Or um, you know, <laughs> also, also the white guys, or just uh, outright shockers by Croatia, for instance. Uh, it was about to happen. The only team that kind of had a little bit of consistency over these four games were actually the Dutch, who again uh, get a late win against Wales. So duplicity of uh, events there. However, it's none of these teams that I'm wearing. I decided to wear Greece. Greece are the only nation, despite all the great results. I mean, it was basically between Hungary and Greece for me. Greece is the only nation I have already secured the top spot. Greece is promoted to League B, which will be huge for them. Uh, um, because I think a, Greece belongs there. Uh, second of all, they have been going through a rough time, finally taking the Nations League seriously. seriously. Um, they will um, get a little bit better. We need a better Greek team. And uh, lastly, I feel that this will give them also another chance of qualifying for the Euros, which uh, last time around they didn't manage just because they didn't take the Nations League serious enough. So that is pretty uh, positive from my point of view. Let's run through the results. I mean, the first one, I mean, uh, the Sunday games were kind of a little bit so 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 so. I mean, that the Spain will beat the Czech Republic was not, uh, always expected with Carlos Soler uh, scoring the first, first, first and Sarabia getting the second. Um, yes, the Czechs had probably at the beginning a little bit more chances however Spain always controlled the game and in the end run away winners there. Um, Switzerland against Portugal, a first minute goal by Harry Seferovic, who actually plays in Portugal, uh, seals the deal. It was literally, uh, especially second half, it was very re reminiscent of the Austria against France clash, with the exception of Switzerland got the job done. There was a period, and I, I think Liao even call, uh, scored a goal early uh, in the um, first half, to get an equalizer, but uh, there was a clear offside in the build-up. But the amount of chances that Portugal produced and did not then convert, and uh, you know, especially with Jan Sommer standing uh, on the on, on his head, was all that was needed in it there. So Bravo Switzerland, after three consecutive losses, you actually put yourself back uh, into a position where you may or may not get relegated. It's definitely down between the Czechs and the Swiss, and will come down to the head-to-head. More on that a little bit later. What can I tell you about the Denmark-Austria game? Um, a Denmark playing in the women's jerseys. I, I'm i really getting annoyed at this. Um, I don't have a problem with the thought per se. Really, I don't. However, uh, seemingly those jerseys are not selling well because they are rather dull and now we have the men's team wearing to sell a, f a few more. Don't give me that crap uh, that we want to uh, put the spotlight on the women's Euro. A tournament that I, I probably will not be able to cover because I'm just in vacation there, which hurts honestly a little bit because I really, I, I was in a way looking forward to it, but the way our vacation plans worked uh, had to be going this way. So yeah, uh, we'll see about it. Other than that, the opening when I mean, Austria had also a first minute chance, but it was pretty, 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 pretty in a very intense opening few few minutes that uh, Denmark, uh, it went back and forth, but the longer it went, the more you, you can see that Denmark are asserting themselves on a better team, giving Austria a much changed Austria team, also has to be said, um, but giving them seriously amount of trouble and uh, it was only a matter of time when Wind made the 1-0 
was totally deserved uh, and then Skov Olsen the second one very well played yes uh, everyone was caught out of position there but this was part of the match plan and Ralf Rangnick afterwards said this was the first time that we have been uh, tactically inferior and it also shows that you cannot just uh, make up the loss of uh, a Conrad Lima and so on so uh, this was basically a third string squad and there the depth is not uh, that uh, big also, uh, from an Austrian perspective, it built all up so nicely for this France game where every, you know, everyone was there and then you had this one more game and it just didn't feel, uh, you know, you just felt everyone was, was, was tired and exhausted. And yeah, the third, the second string, uh, the third string, uh, squad, uh, squad just, just, just a big, fully deserved win for Denmark, who actually played really nice. Commemorated nicely their uh, Euro '92 win uh, with a 30-year uh, big co a big co 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 choreography, and Denmark actually with the win getting back on track after a loss to Croatia, and asserting themselves on top of the group as well as, as we will see. However, it is not France that will vie for the stuff. top top spot. France are out of contention for making the final four. Their holders are out because they lose at home to Croatia to an early Modric penalty. And an absolutely dull performance by France. Yes, loads of possession, blah, blah, blah. But, um, you know, possession without pen pen penetration, a very weird jersey matchup that I did, didn't expect. I mean, okay, we have seen now France and Croatia play so often in the first jerseys. I guess they said, well, for once, let's have them play in the second jerseys. I do like the white France church, uh, jersey, but I... The Croatia jerseys this time around, I really hope that for the World Cup, uh, better ones will come. But yeah, uh, France, one of the big boys, in serious relegation trouble although i think the way that the results have been going now uh it will Aust it will be austria who will go down which is uh, kind of expected but there was a little bit higher hope i'm i mean that's the one thing the photo apologists will not say yeah ralf rangek doesn't get the results in his first games i mean the, the, it's good give don't give him the crap because we're playing the best of the best and Foda never really did and only had his good performances uh, at the beginning when he actually played friendlies over friendlies and there they did well so in that sense yeah uh, don't give me that crap uh, Austria is uh, very positive about Austria in general however the way I see this group going um, they will need at least another win uh, to not get relegated and I don't see them winning in France maybe at home to Croatia but at that point it might be a little bit too late so yeah uh, we gotta see how this all pans out um, and then <laughs> yesterday evening I mean the result of the evening it's not the game that I watched I, I actually watched the Italian and the Dutch games uh, which I think were a little bit more more more, more, more entertaining England beaten by Hungary 4-0 the biggest home defeat I think since 1928 or something like that which must have been against Scotland or something like like that I mean I do remember that the famous Hungarian side around uh, Pushkash in 53 went to Wembley and dealt England their first home home home, home defeat with, with a 6-3 win there which was kind of one of these momentous results um, in, uh, in soccer history this may not be as momentous in that sense, however, an absolute destruction. Now, again, do not draw too many conclusions, especially going for the World Cup. Uh, England had more possession. England played the uh, the boys in a way. Then they they they, they played an formation that will never show up at the World Cup. And Hungary was super uh, efficient. However, Hungary. I actually mentioned the Netherlands. I think Hungary is the other team that was rather consistent through, throughout. They really were motivated by the fact that they play against the three big boys and had nothing to lose in there. And they played exactly like it. No one expected anything from Hungary here. And that's what you get. Uh, Shalai, with, his, with, with the first shot and goal for Hungary, maybe it's 1 0, he actually doubles the lead um, in the 70th. And that's a guy who Freiburg scored four goals all season. It just uh, shows the uh, the discrepancy. Um, then the three nil uh, shortly thereafter, basically put the nail in in the coven through notch. Uh, then Stones gets sent off with an absolutely ridiculous uh, red card, and then uh, the exchange that really didn't make make sense. Uh, Saka coming off, Maguire coming off. So you three nil down, and you gonna defend to not uh, lose more. Uh, you lost more because uh, gosh, Duck. Well, Gus Duck, after a notch assist, uh, makes it 4-0.
boy, what a beatdown that was. Uh, again, it's more for the result. I think um, most nations, and this applies the same to France, uh, Italy, it also applies to Germany, also applies to the nations that they, they developed. But this was really a time to test the depth of your squads and give uh, other uh, players a little bit of uh, showing. And maybe this, this season's Nations League is not to be taken as seriously. Yes, we will have some big boys probably getting demoted down uh, to a League B, but so be it. You can just get anywhere. You have it all set up. So I don't see the big proper problem. Use this for testing and use this for breaking in some young players. That's exactly what Italy did. Yes, this was definitely a C squad for Italy. Uh, if Donnarumma is the captain, it tells you a whole lot uh, <laughs> about the quality the qual 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 squad. And Germany actually shows for once a really, really good game. Got only the third win in the Nations League um, and also the first win ever in a competitive match against Italy, ever in 90 minutes. I don't count now the um, penalty shootout um, in 2016 because that was technically a draw. So for the first time Germany had beaten Italy in a competitive match, probably the, of all the competitive matches they played is the least important. We also can ag agree on that one. However, Germany fully deservedly won the Kimmich, uh, giving them an early lead. Uh, and then it was only a moment of time. I mean, Italy had some phases of a little of uh, showing something, uh, but it was always going to be Germany. I mean, they made it with a bit of penalty two to it before they have, uh, the writing was on the mall wall. Then uh, actually Italy had uh, for like uh, the first five minutes or so, they really actually were more uh, dangerous. However, Thomas Müller makes it 3-0 and that was the game. And then uh, even Team Timo Werner scores twice within a minute. Uh, the second one definitely on Donnarumma. And I thought, oh, this is going to be really, really ugly. I mean, uh, Italy is not going in the same pantheon as Brazil is going. Um, no, but Italy actually can get back Nianto. Uh, the big discovery of this international break for Italy uh, pulls from back 78 and then Bastoni laid on makes it 5-2. Maybe a little bit of flattering score. I think 5-1 uh, was actually more indicative of how things went. But uh, yeah. I actually, if I detach my fandom for Italy from the match, uh, watching the German team was actually, uh, they showed some good stuff. It was actually enjoyable to see Germany play this way. It does hurt that Italy loses to Germany that big. On the other side, again, it was the young guys playing. Mancini doesn't have to prepare for a World Cup. He needs to find now a squad going forward. And this is the right thing. Break them in now. Um, maybe the one sad thing is that Nianto, uh, he scored his first goal for Italy, couldn't celebrate it. That's maybe the one sad thing. Um, my other favorite in the Netherlands, though, had no trouble, uh, had trouble, <laughs> but continued their great run um, in a game where they really seemed to be squarely on track for an easy week victory, playing both teams playing in a way jersey, which also found Kier curious. Noah Lang, uh, very heavily linked with Milan at, 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 at the moment, scores with a brilliant turn. Uh, the 1 0 again, it was more or less a second or uh, third string in the dark squad. And Hakpo has some luck because uh, he wanted to play a deep pass or even take a shot. He takes two deflections, goes back to him, and he puts it in the net in the 23rd. In, 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 in and I thought, this is going to get ugly for Wills. However, Johnson, with a one quick transition, pulls it back. Then the game is kind of plodding uh, along. Um, always the Dutch a little bit more uh, dangerous, but you know, not, nothing really big happening until a penalty is given and Gareth Bale converts in the 92nd and you think, oh, the Dutch throw away another uh, game at home in Rotterdam. Uh, that's not fun. <laughs> right off the kick of the pie makes it 3-2. Uh, and again, uh, like Vejos did in Cardiff, now Depay did it. So the Dutch twice uh, with stoppage time goals after having just conceded, come back and win against Wales. Uh, very much in control of their own destiny. Belgium securing a second spot with a 1-0 um, a away win to Poland uh, with Michi Bashoi uh, scoring uh, the goal, but I honestly didn't see anything from that. In League B, proper, probably the standout result was Norway beating Sweden 3-2 with uh, Erling Haaland running riot. A Sweden team that seemed toothless, injuries, blah, blah, blah. Still, Norway 
beating Sweden, as I said this before, this could be a turn up in, uh, in the power balance in Scandinavia. Um, I worry a little bit about the depth in the Norwegian squad, but you know, you have two absolutely world class players with Ödegard and Holland. So, uh, looking very, uh, I'm looking very much forward to see them play. I mean, Emil Forsberg pulls from back, Sirloth makes it a 3 1 when just Sweden was pressing and very late on you know, 3 makes it. Uh, 3 2. Serbia also had a rather comfortable 2 0 lead at uh, Slovenia, where actually, if they beat uh, Slo Slovenia, then I, I would say Serbia uh, could give a challenge to Norway. Uh, that was not meant to be. Uh, they ca they uh, con concede early in the second half um, uh, 2 2 and never can find a winner. Um, was there a penalty miss? No, there was not a penalty miss in there, but I thought so. So, yeah, uh, that was kind of. Uh, I don't want to say a shocker, but it was not a uh, planned result this, this way. Iceland twice had the lead over Israel. A win would have put them back in contention for the top spot with Israel's uh, being being there. However, Israel can twice equalize and Israel seems to be League A bound. It sounds weird, to be honest. It sounds really, 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 really weird. Um, big result for Scotland, 4-1 over Armenia. So uh, Scotland also back on track after being mauled by Ireland. Uh, Bosnia, 3-2 of Finland, perfect 3-2. They had a, it was an early stage where in the fifth minute, Pjanic converts a penalty. Puki equalizes, Kalman in the 18th, uh, makes it 2 of Finland, but then 2-2 two, two through Dzeko. And then, um, um, in, in the second of Jekko, uh makes it 3 2. So, uh, a good result for Bosnia, who now also seem League A bound. Um, Montenegro 3 0 at Romania. Romania is in trouble, definitely. And Ukraine against Ireland uh, played in Poland. So, the home game is played in Poland, uh, where uh, Dovbik can equalize. And this was the fifth game for Ukraine uh, in this international break. Uh, so, yeah, also a rather, rather, rather tough schedule. Um, going to League C, we already know um, Greece beating Kosovo 2 0. I quickly want to mention uh, the Georgia Bulgaria game was played 0 0. Credible result for Bulgaria, I would say. Um, and uh, Greece beating Kosovo. The goals came late, but with this win, Kosovo were the only challengers head to head. Greece are already through into League uh, B, and as I said, I am personally very happy about that goal is coming through Giacomakis and uh, Mantalos. And another big result was Kazakhstan win over Slovakia. Uh, that also means that uh, Kazakhstan is probably playing in League B. Also something that doesn't allow to really quite jive well, but hey, if you twice beat Slovakia, you fully deserve, deserve well, they had a 2-0 half-time lead already. Um, of the other results, Luxembourg had a 2-0 lead uh, that was then squandered within a few minutes uh, against the Faroe Islands and Turkey beat Lithuania 2-0 uh, and going into League D. Um, we had Malta beating San Marino, so there will be no wins for San Marino, more, most likely. Uh, Moldova stay in contention, but Latvia beating Liechtenstein 2 0. So, uh, if you look here, here today, we see Latvia will go up in League C, as will be Ost uh, Estonia. So, that's pretty clear. Um, going a little, a little bit further, Turkey, uh, well, technically not through, but more or less through as well, uh, especially with Luxembourg now, uh, dropping points. And it seems that Lithuania is getting re rarely relegated uh, since the Ferry Islands picked up another point uh, that was maybe not expected against Luck. Luck, Luck. As I said, Greece is already through. Mathematically, everything sound. It's between Northern Ireland and Cyprus, with Cyprus, of course, uh, looking on the uh, on, on the outside, looking in. Kazakhstan, very comfortable. I don't think that Slovakia will be able to come back there. Um, and so, uh, same goes for Georgia. So uh, two former Soviet republics uh, playing in League B next time around. Also, not uh, very expected, although North Macedonia still could do something there. League B, um, Ukraine ahead of Scotland, they still have to play uh, their head-to-head, -head, which could probably decide how this will be going. But at the moment, Ukraine are favored their island and our Armenia are just below there. Israel, very much odds on to uh, get promoted, although Albania has a game more, but they will, they cannot overtake is Israel more. Israel only has one game left, and this is against Albania. So Albania has the two games against the others. 
Um, then Bosnia looking very, very good. Montenegro also could make it into League A. Finland with that loss to Bosnia probably out of, out of it. And Norway also looking strong. Yes, Serbia, if they beat Norway there and then hope that Norway drops points against Slovenia while they beat Sweden, that's possible still, but rather unlikely. So um, I think the four group leaders probably will make it into League A. Standings for League A, yes, as I said, big, two big teams are on bottom place and in a high danger of being relegated. As I said, I really think that France will uh, get ahead of Austria, unfortunately, but uh, yeah, so be it. Switzerland uh, gave themselves a shot, maybe they can catch the Czech Republic, which I actually would not be surprised if they do, because I think Switzerland are a better team than the Czechs overall. It's between Italy and England. One big boy is going down. Hungary is there's almost no chance that they're not getting rele that, that there's almost no chance of them getting relegated at this moment. So it's between Italy and England, and they meet soon uh, with Italy um, having a slight adv uh, definite advantage uh, with with the points. And then between Poland and Wales, who will go down there? The Netherlands looking rather pretty uh, going up, uh, having already the big win against Belgium. Belgium, Belgium will have a hard time um, getting the tiebreaker over the Dutch. And then, yeah, Dutch needing probably just a point against Poland to secure. Uh, maybe not. Depends. Yeah, uh, two draws and the Dutch are through. The Dutch are also the big favorites because most likely they will host the final final four and now it's Denmark, Spain and Germany rounding out. Denmark we knew, Spain uh, is new in there and Germany is also new in there. Um, Portugal might still get Spain if they beat uh, Spain at home. Uh, other than that, yeah, Hungary, Croatia, uh, outside chances of making in. Same as with it Italy, it's a very even group, but I think that a 2-5 loss for Italy will weigh heavy, although I could potentially see Italy getting a, a total of six points if they take it a little bit more serious. I think there's a definite break when it comes to Austria. Austria is not going to make it to the top four. For sure, they, as I said, there's more looking down. Uh, already eliminated are Poland, France, England and Wales. So also needed to say that. Upcoming games, that's late September. Um, as I said, Pretty big one, Croatia and Denmark to decide who goes to the final four, France and Austria to decide who goes down. Um, Germany, Hungary also, who makes it to the uh, final four in Italy, England for going down. This just, just does not make any sense. Uh, and then Portugal and Spain uh, just warming up for their final encounter. Uh, in League B, at the very beginning, we have Scotland, Ukraine. How the worker qualify couldn't double up for the League B is beyond me because I think this was the only right thing to do if they're already in the same group. Have this game count for two comp competition, but I guess marketing reasons uh, don't allow it. And then uh, we have here uh, quite uh, quite a few interesting ones. Again, Scotland, Ireland sticks out. Serbia, Sweden would be cool, but you know, Sweden is out of con con contention. We have to see what Slovenia can do against no uh, Norway. Bosnia against Montenegro. That's the one to watch here. Uh, in League C, also not much to play for anymore there. Greece is or, or through. Turkey can do it against Luxembourg. Uh, and Georgia, North Macedonia seems to be the one. Uh, Kazakhstan also can get against Belarus. And then in League D, we have just the final uh, games where uh, we have already Estonia against Malta going for promotion. Same thing goes with Latvia, Moldova. That finishes the Nations League. As I said, it was a, cra a crazy round from the get-go. I really thought that, uh, you know, three games, that's manageable. Four games in such a long time, you will, there's bound to be one, uh, for each team that is completely a mess. For some teams, it was more mess than others. Uh, it's a not schedule. In any case, please let, let me know how you enjoyed the internationals now. Except other than the World Cup, I'll be my uh, channel vacation kind of starts. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. The season is over. Um, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey, just in case you enjoyed this video, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider following me on social media and actually subscribe to my channel so that you stay up to with everything that happens in my software universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.